everybody. Oh, hey. Welcome to Alpha Book Club. This is our online interactive book club for our Alpha community members. And we have a very special thing we're doing this month. It's all on YouTube as well for free. Ooh. So hello, YouTube. How are you Hi doing? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Hector Navarro. And joining me as always is Rachel Hine and Maude Garrett. Guys, before we get into this, before we get into what Alpha Book Club is, mm. I think we should all just reintroduce Drink. ourselves real quick. Just say what we're doing here and why. Drink, yeah. And maybe have Drink a sip clink. of wine. Uh, and Drink clink. And there we go. Alpha Book Club. Honor, a little honorary Cheers, clink. Guys. Thank you. If you've got, if you've got mm. wine at home, go ahead and clink. Go ahead and clink. <laughs> um, uh, what's up, everybody? Hi in YouTube. Hi in the Alpha Chat. Uh, I'm Hector Navarro. I'm not that much of a reader, you would say. Uh, I'm probably, uh, uh, probably what you would call a moron, an idiot. Not very mm. well read. That's my friend you're talking about. However, I love comics, and I've been reading comic books since I was five years old, and uh, I love film. And uh, when I had a chance to come into the show with these fantastic people, I jumped at the chance because I want to read more. I love reading. Um, uh, I have a handful of favorite books, but I love uh, visualizing worlds, and, I th and I'd like to think that my imagination is is limited, which is why I'm the type of person that likes to watch the movie first and then read the book. I want to see the movie first because if the movie's good, <laughs> when I spend time in the book, it's like a director's cut. It's like an extended director's cut of that film. Do you that's know what I mean? Because you, oh, every no, book is always no. going to be compressed <laughs> to a two-hour movie. You do that's, you. That's my dumb idiot opinion, and I'm sure that it's probably wrong. A couple people have hit me up and been like, me too, I agree. Because if I read the book first, I will inevitably hate the film. <clears throat> that's what always ends up happening. That's why I like to give each of them a fair shot. But that's who I am. But uh, uh, Maud, let's start over here with you. Maud, why are you here? Hi. Uh, look Look, uh, I read my very first chapter book when I was uh, four or five. It was called Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie for all my Aussies out there. Yeah, yeah. Long <laughs> book. Shouldn't have got through it. Did. Um, and I've been a big book f avid reader ever, ever since. I hated reading in school when they told you that you had to read something. And as soon as no one told me that I had to do, do it, I wanted to. Um, I'm big into fantasy. Patrick Rothfuss is an amazing author. I read his stuff. Can't wait for the next book. Write faster, buddy. Um, <laughs> but I love I love anything that's in any kind of fantasy realm. Started writing a book in 2009. Didn't happen. So I started again last week. Yes! Yay! Yes! We're going to give it a go. Me and my mother, I've set her a little project and we're going to write a book together. And it's Ooh. going to be, uh, in c it's a contemporary fantasy book. But what I don't adore is non-fiction. Sorry, guys. I don't like learning facts. I like to escape. I'm all about a fantasy world Ooh, I love where facts. I can disappear. <laughs> sure. I like that too, but man, I love some good facts. Get fucks, not facts is what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. That's what, what I said. <laughs> um, Ooh, Rachel. I'm saving that. <laughs> that's a t shirt next week, guys. What did you say? Get what, not facts? Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I like that. Rachel, uh, Rachel. <laughs> oh, oh, my turn. What's okay. your reading history? Um, so, like Maud, I started reading when I was very, very young. I was one of those kids that would always be by myself in a corner reading what I wanted to, not what I had to. Mm. So much. I wouldn't say that I got in trouble, but I would read when I was supposed to be at family events or <laughs> doing my homework mm -hmm. or during PE. I would try to fudge like doctor's notes to get out of PE so I could read my book. Like very intense reading addiction. Um, oh, that's real serious. Yeah, no. You forged doctor's notes. Yeah, you I mean, were I was a like eight or nine, can. but I did wow. like <laughs> outside or running, and I did like reading. So mm. I thought. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. It didn't. Ah, oh, there you go. Don't run, just read. Yeah. That's the G version I was looking for. <laughs> um, I think I like your R rated version yeah, better. I, like yours better. <laughs> I, I probably should have been a little bit more active when I was a kid. <laughs> Maybe I would be more yeah. active now. Um, and then when I went to school, I actually got my degree in creative writing and literature and kind of lost my love for reading a little bit because I had to do it so much mm. and write so much about it and do yeah. a lot of the classics, which I love, but some I do not. Mm -hmm. And there was this kind of feeling about, or a vibe of that fantasy and genre and um, sci-fi weren't as prestige or weren't the things that we should be reading. And yeah. that's how I got into reading. So yeah. I lost it for a little bit and then came back. So yeah, fantasy, especially urban fantasy. We were talking about the Dresden Files. So I can't wait to read your book. Um, yeah, and we're gonna read it on the show. Okay, that's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite book is *The Martian Chronicles* by Ray Bradbury, which cool. is kind of cheating because it's a, a collection of short stories. Very cool. Much like that's sort of Fahrenheit 451, right? Yep. Ray Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Love Fahrenheit 451. Ooh, so yeah, that's that's great. Uh, that's that's a, awesome. That's us. If you I want to tell us about you, we've got yeah. two chats going as well. Oh. Alpha Book yeah. Club, our alpha members, we've got you right there as well. Shout out to Java Book Girl, uh, Geek. Book Geek Girl, my bad, a lot of words, but we love reading, so that's good. Plague <laughs> Wind, Pinkishly, uh, you're all in there. Theri, 
Hi. Well, I'm going to get your name wrong every time. I Bucky want to say the, uh, Terry. Bucky in the Alpha Chat says, Towel at the Ready. Fantastic. Okay. Because we are reading uh, a book that, like every other book we've ever read on the show thus far, I've never read it. It's called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Have you all ever read it? Yeah. Look at that. Douglas Adams, classic. First published, I think, in 1978. Something 79. like that. i got to read this other comment. Oh, I think uh, Lurie or somebody in the YouTube chat said, Thank God I'm not the only one who watches the movie before the book. There you go. There's a couple of yeah, us out there. Got, yeah. Cool. Welcome, Nothing welcome. you ever do is weird now that there's internet. Exactly. We're, and, and also, it's what's really fun about the book club that I think we've found so far is that we always have different reading habits yeah. or different opinions mm. or different yeah. things that we've read or that we like. And so it's really fun. And hopefully you guys in YouTube join along with us to kind of share. Everyone perceives stuff differently. You yes. take your own baggage along with different books, as yes. we all know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's super fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so look at that. We read uh, the first 10 chapters of this one. Caesar Irwin says, The Martian Chronicles is my favorite book ever. <gasps> Yay! That's great. That's great. So, yeah, we have we read, what was it, Ma, the first nine? The fir I, I read the first 10. The first 10? I read up to, I read up to 11. Oh, that's incorrect. Do that? You was were not nine? supposed to do that. You no, you're supposed to read up to nine. Or read nine. <gasps> That's okay. Oh, you're a usually I'm what? Thank God. I'm usually one chapter behind it. It's like, what was it again? <laughs> yeah, no, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So nine chapters, uh, right up to ten is where we should have read uh -huh. for today. That's all we're discussing today. We're not going to do any spoilers, even though you've read this book before. Yes. You've read Hitchhiker's Guide before. No, I've listened <gasps> to it before. Oh, okay. that's great. Yes. The ra the radio play. Not uh, that w whatever was on vinyl. Yeah, the record. Yeah. That's yeah. what I had. Yeah, my parents. Was that, that, is that the originals? Yeah, is that the BBC radio play that, first, that first came out? That's amazing. Yes. That must have been a nice experience for My you. My parents liked the dupes, so they collected all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, Very this cool. Is, this is what we used to do. Mm. And general knowledge questions around the kitchen table. Yeah, that's why you're so smart. the internet. That's mm -hmm. why you're so smart. That's great. I refuse to believe uh, that Canberra was wow. the capital city of Australia because Canada sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> Inside into Here's a great comment from the YouTube chat, guys. <laughs> Dwarf of God says, I started reading when I was four. I had scoliosis surgery, and not being able to play outside, I found better worlds inside of books. Hell That's awesome. Yes, you get it. That's awesome. I'm sorry about that. That is so cool. That sucks. That's so cool. So, yeah, guys, let's talk about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Normally, in this part of the show, we like to do a little bit of previously on, and then whatever the chapters were up to this point. Except since this is our first four way into Hitchhikers, uh, let's do a little bit of just background. Douglas yes. Adams is a writer that I'm not super familiar with, but I'm also. I probably have been influenced by his work and not even know it. Yes. So you know he's I mean? also Literally. done Dirk this, Gently's um, Holistic Detective Dirk Gently's Detective Agency. Holistic Academy Detective, Detective Agency. Detective Agency. Uh, and, and, and he was uh, not a member of Monty Python, but appeared in some of their sketches, collaborated with some of the, the original Monty Python guys. I'm a big fan of American comedy. I'm a big fan of the comedy that was big when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Things like Saturday Night Live and sketch comedy and stand up and all that stuff. I've I been was doing not. improv since forever. I and love I that. I want to talk about the different comedy when we were reading this yes. book as well. It yes. is so obviously written by a Brit. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy it is the so satire, British. The dryness. Yeah. Like, and I'm reading it and it's almost a wash of refreshness over yes. me because this is like what Australian humor is. <laughs> I bet. And sure. I have a feeling like Americans yeah. would be reading me like, I just don't get it. Well, it's, <laughs> it's very complex. That was me a little bit. Super little bit. layered and you ever. Every, every sentence is packed with something else. It's a play on words. Yes. It's a reference to something else. Mm -hmm. And I got into this book around the time that I discovered Eddie Izzard mm -hmm. and got into British comedy. And Who Eddie Izzard did one voice in the film. Yes. But go on. Yes, so that's all, true. all the British comedians yeah. know each other. All yeah. these guys know each other. Well, there's seven of them. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only there's <laughs> only a handful, and they just swap out wigs and, mm -hmm. and do. But yeah, I, I got into Eddie Izzard and then Monty Python and Douglas Adams, and really when I was like 13, 14, got super into British comedy, and yeah. so. When I was reading this, I had that too. I was like, oh, right, this is, this See, is so and great. It's an this is fantastic. I didn't have that <laughs> because I didn't grow up on British comedy. I know a little bit about it. I understand its influence and its effects and all that stuff. And some of the stuff I love and some of the stuff, honestly, honestly, for me, as a kid who just grew up in Southern California, I'm like, I don't, I don't think this is, for, I don't get this. I don't think this is for me. I don't think this is. You should and see it's, me it's, watching it's, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I'm like, tell me when I'm supposed to laugh. I could teach I could teach a class. I could teach a class about why the Lonely <laughs> Island is the funniest fucking thing ever. Like, they I could are. teach a class. Yeah. Like, they I could break really it down scientifically. Be like, no, no, no. This is why this is funny. I like, studied, love it. Um, what Brooklyn Nine? -Nine what's his name again? Andy Samberg. I studied Andy Samberg's O face in the Jizz in My Pants, and I think I've got it down here. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Wow. Was that was that when Bruce Willis was dead at the end of Sixth Sense? That's a that, yeah. I think that's the face. Yeah. American yeah. humor. Yep. See, that's great. <laughs> um, so this is definitely British humor. And Douglas Adams, uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2001. Mm. 
uh, of a random heart attack, mm -hmm. which I think is, is 49, 49 yeah. years old, which I think that it is very morbid. But honestly, when I read that fact, I had this thought that is perfect for who Douglas Adams was as a writer, as a satirist, as a comedian, as a, as a devout atheist, mm -hmm. is this this random thing that happened. I was like, that, that, almost, that fact almost read like a line from The Hitchhiker's Guide to yeah. The Galaxy. Just how Not he just, 42. He, he went and did a workout, he was expected to do a speech at like Santa and Monica College three days, and the last yeah. thing he it ever did. It does read like mm -hmm. a line, and it's, especially when you get into the, later when we start talking about the book, but the mm -hmm. probability drive and things the probability like that. Yeah. Like, that's, that's Seems so, so random, but he's got that. he's got an incredible life that if you guys haven't done, even just a wiki, so just just look him mm -hmm. up, just read about some of his work. And like I said, I'm sure that I've been influenced without even knowing it from, mm -hmm. from his work and his comedy. It was originally a radio comedy broadcast on BBC Radio 4 in 1978, and then he turned it into a one novel and then four more afterwards that mm -hmm. I think he wrote up until 1992 or something wow. like that, spread out over a couple years. Uh, video there's been a video game, a stage play, a film. What's that? What was the video game? I think there was a Hitchhiker's video game. In like 84. Oh, that's yeah. cute. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was probably like a choose your own adventure type of Zork yeah, thing. Yeah. Like Zork, like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Open I, I, the cupboard. We Take just the read. Key. We yeah. just read Ready Player One last month, so I feel like, oh yeah, yeah, we know all about oh, that yeah, stuff. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, one of those. 1972 on the desk. <laughs> for sure, for sure, we got it. Yeah. We got it. Uh, Capt <laughs> April in uh, the YouTube chat asks, who here has listened to the radio play Mod Has? Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, my first exposure to Hitchhikers was the 2005 film starring Martin Freeman, who then I didn't love, but now I love. Mm. I remember seeing that movie and going, oh, he's the Jim from The Office that I haven't seen yet. Oh, and and it didn't it, it didn't have an effect on me, but now I'm like I love Martin Freeman. Now I love Martin Freeman. I hadn't I, seen it yet. Yeah. What isn't he in at the moment? Yeah. He's just signed on with Marvel. Yeah. Sure. And f he's yeah. in Fargo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He's there was great. a hot he's second when he wasn't in Middle Earth or Harry Potter. I think he was the actor who appeared on. Uh, and maybe it wasn't him. It was somebody else who appeared on like the Tonight Show or something, and was like, "I'm one of the British actors that's not in a Harry Potter movie or Lord of the Rings so movie." But he's on Bilbo. Uh, uh, Bilbo. Uh, Oh, it was before that. Yeah, it was before that. It was I like don't want after. to talk about the Hobbit movies, though. <laughs> okay, they're fine. I think they're fine. Uh, but we're only talking about <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide. The first nine chapters, it opens with, in the film, Martin Freeman's character, Arthur Dent. Arthur Dent, who's tall. Oh, he's not Martin Freeman in my head. <laughs> Awkward. <No. laughs> he is in mine. He is in mine. Um, uh, uh, you want to know who he is in my head? He's, yeah, who is he? Richard Armitage. Ooh, I was mm. thinking Ben Wishaw. Mm. Ben Wishaw. Here's one I prepared earlier. Ben Wishaw as Q in the most recent uh, Bond films. Yes. And Skyfall and um, Spectre. And Q. what else? And oh, he's perfume. The voice of, he's the voice right? of Paddington in perfume? the movie Paddington. You keep I don't talking. know if I think so. Perfume? I haven't Help yet, me. but I've been recommended. Um, so Arthur Dent is uh, one of his best friends is Ford Prefect, who is a hitchhiker. He's a visitor, and uh, he's kind of an odd dude. He's Martin, he's Martin Freeman, Ford Prefect. Change. Oh, I definitely have most F. It makes no sense, but I definitely have most F in my head. <laughs> most definitely? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. That's why he had his name? Uh, most F, most F. Um, and he is an alien, you learn, who is writing or updating this incredible book with, that is the highest selling uh, book that's ever come out of this mm. intergalactic uh, publishing company because it's slightly cheaper and it has the words don't panic printed right on the cover which is which is just a great British humor it's great mm -hmm. I can't even deliver it correctly see how <laughs> see how British it is even when I'm saying it doesn't even work um, so uh, Ford uh, reveals to um, Arthur Dent that the world is going to explode in 12 minutes but or he does end. It so calmly yeah. so like calmly. it's nothing and in they fact go to a like pub. a true Brit and Aussie mm -hmm. the first thing that you have to do when the world is ending is get pissed get mm -hmm. pissed get yeah. pissed Six it pints. Six, six pints. pints. Yes. Sir. It was only like one pint in the movie, right? Six pints. Six pints in the. Six it's pints. Amazing. You need salt. You need that uh, that um, whatever it was that alcohol has to be able to travel yes. intergalactically. For your muscles, muscle relaxer. Muscle right? relaxer, mm -hmm. thank you, it's a muscle That's relaxer. So he saves Arthur because he's friends with Arthur. Even though Arthur's house is getting demolished, he doesn't care because the earth is getting demolished. Yes. Um, or rather, Ford doesn't care, it doesn't matter to him. And so they start off by hitching a ride, by sticking their thumb out. And I think in the book that, that describes it like it's an electronic thumb, it's a device that you actually Oh, either hold up or put your thumb in. I'm not entirely clear on how Oop, it works. I picture it's, it's like a boop. It's like a remote yeah. control. Like, a, oh sure. no, they're dying. Can you hear them? They're dying. We're too sure. late, R2. That thing. <laughs> oh, that little thing? Mm. Oh, that's great. That's how I picture it. Good reference. Good <laughs> rep. Good rep. Um, so, uh, a uh, rich robot. Yes. So Plague Wind says Ford Prefect is the breakout character of the first nine chapters. I would agree. I think yes, he's a absolutely. fantastic character. Fantastic character. Um, I love his description. I pictured it like when <laughs> they did that in a movie. Edgar? Uh, said it was, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, Vincent D'Onofrio. Classic. But how, oh, I was the thinking Men in Black. When the, That's the, yeah. yeah. Same, it's, same person. It's Vincent D'Onofrio. Oh, <laughs> Guys, it's Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> Sorry. <Tenofrio. I've laughs> 
He doesn't look like Vincent D'Onofrio, but it's Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, you who's just blew him. Who's the roach? <laughs> <laughs> who's Edgar? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Guys, we're going to need a second. Richard Hines' mind was just blown because she realized that the roach in the Men in Black film yeah. was actually Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. yeah. Everybody okay. take a second. All right. Okay, good. Whew. One day, I've, I've, I made this promise for a little while, though, but one day for Halloween, I am going to dress up as that character. Really? Mm. Let me know so that I can dress up as a man in black. And oh, my it will be God. A good be so, I've got the overalls. Yeah, that's I'm true. Mm -hmm. Got the pose. That's pretty good. Is that, some sugar is that better? <laughs> yeah. Just glass with sugar, yeah. He's got <coughs> such a great walk, too. We always get so distracted on the show. Sorry. We have but such a good fun. time. Um, and then the last thing in this first good. nine chapters, when they hitch a ride to this, uh, to one of the ships that destroyed, helped destroy Earth, uh, the, um, what's the name of the aliens again? I forget. The Vogel. The Vogel. 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 Uh, they're the most uh, awful race in the galaxy, apparently, the most yeah, awful species. Yeah, like slug life. Totally. Mm -hmm. Again, Like yeah. you sneezed and it became it's a species. It's gross. They, like a they, mucinex commercial. They never evolved. <laughs> they're slug-like. They were described as never having evolved past uh, evolution, just left them alone. Yeah. It was just like, nope, and then they still managed to survive. <laughs> um, and the last thing, like I said, is uh, they're on the ship. They, uh, you're, learning, you're learning things about the galaxy, that there's like a translator fish, which is real cool. The babblefish. The babblefish, which Love is fantastic. That. Which and they that, then uh, made a, the website babblefish was inspired by this. That would cool. translate. Um, oh. Is that before oh. Google Translate? Yeah. That's awesome. In the I didn't 90s? Know that. I don't know. That's cool. I don't know. Probably I was just a baby. I don't yeah. really don't remember <laughs> that. I don't know. I was two years old. Yeah. <laughs> 1998, I was two. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the, uh, uh, the fish. And, uh, and then the last thing was that the towel is the most helpful, useful item in when Ask you're hitchhiking. Ask any teenage boy and they will agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I want to talk to you guys about is what British humor and British storytelling will always give you, usually on a whole, yeah. is a dire situation where as a viewer or as a reader, you don't particularly know what's going on, but every time you hear more, you get more and more frustrated. Here mm -hmm. is a man going about his business and all of a sudden there are bulldozers everywhere and they're like, I'm sorry, sir. This is your fault that we are going to knock down your house and you didn't realize and that is your problem and we're going to do it right now and there's this helplessness yeah and you're like what is going on no stop 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 what is happening harry potter another great example he's in a cupboard under the oh you haven't read them that was real we mean mod we've been reading them i was trying to make a very <laughs> obvious comparison that's what's so cool about, everyone's read about everyone's alpha book club is that we've all pitched different books that we want to read uh mm -hmm. these guys are really trying to get me to read harry potter and i'd love to i never read one i was like i'll start with the play let's just do the play and they were like no no okay all right <laughs> okay but if you guys wanted to be part of the book club we've got we've got an awesome yes, list of up books to you you guys and actually help us yeah you get to vote and please harry potter please you get to vote and we're always looking for more recommendations which is great so guys cool thing we've got a skype guest joining us right now from our Alpha community. One of our Alpha community members is Rachel. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us. Rachel, Rachel are you there? I'm... Hey, Hi. Rachel. Hi. Oh God, it's Rachel Squared. Hi, it's <laughs> Rachel oh, yeah. Squared. It's true. All right, let's see here. Cool, this there is you an are. Thank That's you so much so for joining funny. us, Rachel. Thank you for having me, yeah. Not for me. I don't have audio yet. Ah, uh, no. Rachel. Let's, we're fixing Rachel's it right now. Hang on one sec. on the Rachel either. line. <laughs> we got go. no audio. Rachel, yeah, I'm sure you sound fantastic. We have a towel. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, that's the problem. Nobody here has a towel. Well, that's the problem. I'll bring one next that's week. That's the problem. And in, in YouTube, it's a nice bedroom. Hat Track Man says room. can't yeah, hide panic. the towel enough. Yeah, don't yeah, panic. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Oh hey. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Fantastic. All right. Great. 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 Cool. Great. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us. First question, thanks Rachel. For where, first of all, where are you calling from? Florida. Oh, very nice, very nice. Named What's, after Flow Rider. What, nope, that's not true, Mont. <laughs> that's not what Americans no, named that is. state after. <laughs> yeah. Really? Is that true? It, to me it is, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> well, all right, I guess that's true, and San Diego is named, uh, it is uh, Spanish for a whale's vagina. Thank you, Rachel, for <laughs> calling. Uh, first question, have you read this book before? Have Will you read you Hitchhiker's read Guide? No, no, I have not. I okay. saw a little bit of the movie a while ago, but not enough to remember. Is it the British humor that is a deterrent for you? No, I actually love it. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about 2017 book lists for you then. What have you read and what are you excited to read? Uh, right now, I'm kind of like you. I'm still waiting on that third name of the wind book. Thank you. See, mm. I talk truth on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've, I've just got a stock, uh, pack of books by my bed that I have to read. So Very cool. Working my way through them. What's your all-time favorite book of all time, Rachel? All-time favorite book? 
this is going to sound bad, but probably War and Peace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, somebody's real smart. That? Great. You're yeah, that's real like smart. The Russians. Do you like any of the other Russian authors? Uh, that's really the only one I've read so far, but I mean, I have a list. If you like that one, Anna Karenina is one of my favorite. It's it's another yeah. beast. It takes a really long. It's good during the winter because mm. it's Russian and you feel like it's like it's not. It doesn't get cold here, so it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> it's the best we got. But it feels like you're reading and mm -hmm. shouldn't be Russian when you read that one then. Uh huh. Oh, uh huh. Gosh. Let me just take <laughs> a sip of that <laughs> real quick. Hey. So what do you think of the book so far? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, at first, I did not know it was by an English author, so when that humor started, it kind of caught me by surprise, but I actually like it better than American humor, so. <laughs> Plus for me. Again, somebody's real smart. Real, real smart. <laughs> yes. Well, I also enjoy British humor, but I also think Chris Farley is the funniest human being ever born, but that's just me, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, Rachel, any questions for Rachel and vice versa? Rachel, Rachel? Hmm? Oh, Rachel, Rachel. Uh, how do you spell, how do you spell I Rachel? The right way, R-A-C-H-E-L. Yeah, <laughs> what's cheers. The, what's the wrong way? A-E-L. Sorry, any yeah. oh. A-E-L's out there. Okay. It's you not just, your fault. And you just, with an E. <laughs> <laughs> Two of you yeah, and guys. I don't like it. That's right. <laughs> um, where, where do you think, since you haven't seen the movie and we try not to get too far I into think spoilers. Rachel saw, she, she saw pieces of the film. Yeah, pieces so the film, do, yeah. do you have any kind of idea where did you do you like to read the forward? Do you read the back of the book or do you go into it blind? Do you have any idea where it's going? I occasionally read the forward, but usually I just go in blind. That's just how I like to read. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, ooh, here's a good one because for the everyone who's new, especially so Hector, mm -hmm. because you love films, you like to listen to scores and different music oh, yeah. while you're reading. Oh yeah. Which I don't do just because I can't focus on it quite as much. Do you listen to any music or have any like reading habits or places you like Usually, to go Usually I don't listen to music, but I do play the violin, so I have classical going sometimes. Oh, very nice. That sounds what? nice. I don't think, you I do? Think, I think we're just <laughs> super smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think. We're getting all the clues. Who's your favorite character in the book so far in these first nine chapters? Right now I have to say Arthur. It's just, uh, what was that? I think it was in chapter two, literally the last line. This must be Thursday. You know, I never got the hang of a Thursday. That feels just like something everyone can relate to. Except everyone's just had that kind of day for me. Yeah. It's Monday for yeah, you? Yeah, screw Mondays. Oh, I Monday. think that's, eh, okay, no, that's true, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point though, because I feel like, and we've read a couple other books on the on the show so far where mm -hmm. you have that sort of every man or every woman, the person who's being thrown into the new circumstances. Harry Potter is another great example of that, where you learn I'm a what? the world around them. I'm a what? Them. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to quote a movie I've seen. Jeez Louise. Not badly <laughs> Sorry I didn't pass your test. <laughs> I'm a what? I think it's pretty good. You're a wizard, Harry. Your, your Velociraptor is so oh, good. Thank that you. It, like, it, that yeah. you'll give me a pass? Um, yeah. How dare Just you? How dare you, Mud? <laughs> um, but yes, yeah. I, I think that having that character that you can, was the same we read A Wrinkle in Time, you kind mm -hmm. of get to be thrown into this world through them. So I think it's always important to have someone like that that you can identify with yes. when you're in kind of a fantastical yeah. situation. In the YouTube chat, Lost the Number says, Rachel is super smart, BTW. Yes. I agree. <laughs> Rachel, is this the first time you're joining us on Alpha Book Club? Have you read any of the other books with us so far? Uh, I haven't read any, but I have uh, watched it since you guys started. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. Yay. And this is, well, congratulations us. on the first book you're reading along with us. Yeah. I've never read it either. It's going to be great. I don't that's know what's going to happen. Great. It's, it's going to be, be so cool. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, yes, we know yeah, Florida's yeah. a little bit later in the time zone as well, so I really yeah, appreciate, we appreciate that. It. Yeah, have a great night, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Thanks again, Rachel. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, that was great. She's really cool. Oh my you know, goodness, love Warren Pizza, are you kidding me? I know. I know. Oh, Super it's like smart. Tolstoy, what's the other one? The Ulysses Just Adventure it. or whatever? Oh, I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I'll do it one day. Oh, there's Chanteram, it's on the list too. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna do it, guys. There's no <laughs> magic of dragons. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the end of uh, this discussion of the first nine chapters, the end okay. of what happens in this thing. Earth is destroyed. Earth is annihilated. Uh, we also meet the president of the galaxy. <sighs> 
uh, Zaphod Beeblebrox. Otherwise yes. known as Rachel's Happy Place. I <laughs> love, yes, that. <laughs> Bring it out. Yep, sure. Uh, <laughs> but I love, so we were talking about the movie, uh -huh. um, and it's been really hot because I, I have a hard time fan casting in my head for some reason. I think there's Timothy Dalton. Tim, so for this one for I have one. Yeah. That's a good one. Actually, yes. yes. Um. Timothy Dalton specifically in like uh, in Hot oh, Fuzz. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In Hot Fuzz, mm -hmm. that yep. is Zaphod. Yeah. Yep. Um, for this one, I thought uh, John Hamm. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. It's just a, really it's a handsome. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. this mm -hmm. like very handsome, but kind of can be creepy or villainous, but you still right. you love his Black them. Mirror episode. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, he's hilarious in that. He's it's so the dumbest, most handsome you, lawyer this ever. This is an aside, but, but uh -huh. um, I got a press release the other day that said that John Hamm to play Don Grouper on SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> and this is real, and they made a like SpongeBob animated opening like Mad Men. Yep. If yep. They SpongeBob I, like, real good. cried, laughed, it was SpongeBob amazing. SpongeBob real good. Huh. But Sam Rockwell plays him in the movie, I mean, and that's pitch just perfect. too perfect. He's great. It's perfect casting. Yeah. Yes. Perfect casting. Another thing that helped me, honestly, a lot of the ideas in this are so fun and so out there. Douglas yeah. Adams' language is so, like you're describing Mod. it doesn't give you everything. But yes. it, it sort of hints, it gives you little breadcrumbs as you get to what he's talking about and get to what is described in the story. Uh, for example, the improbability drive. The mm -hmm. sequence, the, the scene in the book where the characters are, 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 he's describing improbability. What a trip. It's a trip. It's a trip. And it wasn't. The whole sense like, I have no arms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, There's a the thing of pudding or something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, it, the they, building was crashing into the still waves. The building mm -hmm. was moving up instead of the ocean, oh. the ocean being still. Yeah. Um, it was just hilarious. It was so great. And I was disappointed after reading that that they didn't even try to attempt that in the film adaptation. No, and I don't remember it because it was like all of a sudden, um, out of nowhere, who oh, was his, I've forgotten his name, like Ford. Ford's a, t yeah. hey, can you stop being a penguin for one second? He's like, I'm a penguin now. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the <laughs> book, exactly. That. He turned around, around and he quacked, hey, I'm a penguin. Yeah. Um, but the improbability drive in the film is just the ship like turning into different things and then finally landing on the spaceship. It, like, it'd be like yeah. a rubber ducky, a brick. At one point at the end of the film, it's Douglas Adams' head and then it turns yeah. into something else and then it kind of moves on, which helps me understand what the idea was, but to actually right. read it through with Douglas Adams's language was so much fun. The language is so, not just funny, but very clever, and there are moments when the earth dies, and it was, there was a horrible, ghastly silence. Yes. There was a horrible, ghastly noise. Yeah. There was a, it's so beautiful, but the penguin part, and I highlighted a lot of different just bits of language that were really <laughs> great, uh, but the penguin part is so good. Two to the power of 75,000 to one against and falling, Ford waddled around his pond in a furious circle. I like, like what I a great robot voice going to do. <gasps> yeah, you yeah. can. Did you want to read that yeah, section? Yeah, read the whole, yeah, yeah you're. Do you want to, what page is it? Uh, oh, different, different pages. pages. Different pages. It's oh. the oh. end of chapter nine. Okay, okay. Very end. I know, and story time while you look for it. The first time we did this in our first episode when we were all 85. getting together, yes. Maud read a passage and <laughs> <laughs> Our producer afterwards made fun of me because the whole t you guys were doing it back and forth, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like a child, just like, oh, it was so Sometimes. magical. When you did your Man in Black for the Gunslinger, though, oh, and you yeah. had that accent that you put on. Oh, that. Uh, we we all right, all right, all right. <laughs> little Matthew it. McConaughey. Or your Michael Peña. Michael Peña. Michael Peña. Yeah. Michael Peña's good. For a wrinkle good. in time. Michael, Pe you wait till <laughs> I get my my, my brain on. Ma, no, go, so go on. Go ahead. Off like that because the star is born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two to the power of 75,000 to one against and falling. Ford. Ford. Oh. Am I Ford? Ford? What? Who's Ford? Ford waddled around his pond in a Ma serious circle. I it. thought you were doing Rachel's got it. No, Rachel's got it. <laughs> but she can be the British. You, do, you just do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? Wah! He cracked. Where are you going? What's going on? And is there any way of stopping it? Please relax. Oh, American again. Bugger. That's good. Please good. relax. That's good. Said the voice pleasantly. Like a stewardess in an airliner with only one wing and two engines, one of which is on fire. <laughs> you are perfectly safe. But that's not the point, raged Ford. The point is that I'm now a perfectly safe penguin, <laughs> and my colleague here is rapidly run <laughs> running out of limbs. <laughs> oh, it's all right, I've got them back now. <laughs> so British. To the power of 50,000 to one against and falling, said the voice. I can keep going, but I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That's great. Oh, wait. It's just, oh, I just squawked forward in an avian fury. Like, the la it's mm -hmm. just, it's so concise, too, everything. And when you go through any of the bits about 
um, the Hitchhiker's Guide or when they're reading poetry, mm -hmm. all of it, mm -hmm. there's so much crammed into a paragraph. But it's palatable. Mm -hmm. And I say that in comparison to The Dark Tower, because we did read the first book, and I had to read every sentence three times yeah. over. Do totally it, different. That was like the dentist who can't quite yank your tooth out, so his assistant's got three of her fingers in your mouth as well, and you're trying to figure it out, and you like can't even say the words. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it's so quirky and quaint and wonderful and that quick. you're, oh, oh, mm -hmm. you're laughing along quick. with it, because you can absorb it. And it's not trying... It, I love Stephen King's writing, of course. Yes, but mm -hmm. it does feel it, it de did feel like we were struggling to figure out exactly what was going on, and you still, by the nature of the story and how long it is, we still. You looked. Are Talking you the one? Who, yeah, yeah. You the sure. one who, who knows the ending? Yes. You asked your friend. Mm -hmm. oh, I I've found been out. I've yep. been really tempted. By I did. I'll tell you after the show. I did it. Okay, great. No, I did it, and it was worth it, and I liked yep. it. And I'll go down, down. What was the thing? It wasn't forty-two because that's Hitchhiker's Guide. But what was the answer that the woman learned in Dark Tower, and then she went crazy? Nineteen. 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 I'll tell you the word nineteen afterwards. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. If you want, if you want. And you guys can actually watch if you want to go and read other books. All of our past. Uh, shows are on projectalpha.com for everyone who's on YouTube. We did Haunting of Hill House was our first one. Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle mm -hmm. in Time. That's been my favorite so far. I, unbelievable. It has not been mine. <laughs> um, the Dark Tower of the Gunslinger. Mm -hmm. Probably my second favorite. Ready Player One. Ready, Ready Player, player one. one. My last favorite. <laughs> yeah, you didn't like it, yeah, did you? Yeah, last favorite. And now this one. And also I saw the, uh, I saw the uh, I'm trying to watch all the movies and I saw the original Haunting. And I'm going to rewatch the Catherine Zeta Jones one, oh, which man. is in the whole mess. I want to do that too. So bad. So Ooh. bad. But the original is pretty good. Yeah, it's They very just good. put it out on Blu ray, so it's pretty cool. Plague Wind in the, in the alpha chat says that Douglas Adams wanted every adaptation of Hitchhiker's Guide to be a little bit different, which is true. Yeah, the radio yeah. plays different from the books, which is different from the film. There's differences here and there. Um, the video game, all those things are different. Uh, talking about fan casting or, or theme music, uh, I don't have any fan casting because I was just going off of. Here's what I did I read my section this morning, but last night. So about one in the morning, I rewatched the 2005 film, mm. and I'm glad that I did because it helped we'll me. What's that? I'm gonna do it at the end. Do it yeah, at the I end. Am too. Uh, do it at the end. But For it, the it, last it, episode. It just helped me with this some one. sort of like bigger picture, and more importantly, the same way that when I read Scott Pilgrim the comic, and didn't get it honestly, I didn't get it. Yeah. Watched the film, I went okay. I get. I understand uh -huh. what the hum like what the timing is supposed to be. Now I get it. I get what's real and what's not real. I get the you know. To, for me, it made sense. To, to watch the film, it unlocked a lot of the British humor, a lot of the uh, um, the cutaways and cutbacks, and the way that the book was described. I thought it was I thought it was really really good. Um, the movie was it's okay, but it, it is a pretty solid like pretty faithful I should say adaptation of at least so far what I've read in the first nine chapters. I can't I remember not loving it. Yeah. And I liked I certainly liked elements of it. I loved Alan Rickman. Um I mean mm. is the voice of, of Marvin course, was great. Of Marvin. Yeah. And Warwick was great Davis in everything. was the the physical actor of Marvin. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean but honestly if I can throw it in, I felt like the film was just too Americanized. That's what I that's might what be. I was ah, saying before the show was I think be. that it was it was that element of it yeah. because too Americanized you're not picking that up. Mm -hmm. the love because it was written by Douglas Adams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they had another screenwriter come in and play up the love angle between Arthur and Yeah, which that's what I love. Which I assume that was just specific to the film reading the book so far in these first nine chapters it's only hinted that Arthur it met a woman pay off until later in the it doesn't pay off till later in the series so so uh, so far it seems like it's lining up but I but now you're saying that it's not going to be surprising that the love story angle isn't going to be as important in this book as it was in the movie yeah. because it definitely felt tacked on in yeah, the film yeah. it was, it was and Zoe Deschanel was fine you know, Martin Freeman was in terms of the love stuff. I'm like, it's it's fine, but yeah. it's it felt unnecessary. And although I love most Def, he was miscast. Although yeah. I love most Def, uh. this was a clear indication of a movie studio going, well, there's nothing but white people in this book. Quick, there's nothing but there's nothing but white people. What can we do? Let's bring in most Def. He's an up and coming. He's he's hilarious. He's super funny in the movie. I thought he did a good job. But the character in the book is is different. Described not just physically different, but I feel like. The way that he speaks is a British character, even though he's supposed to be an alien, like the, the, the way that is. he delivers things. So I really love Most Def, but I'm like, you know what? This should have been a movie probably that just should have had all white people in it because it, it because it feels like it's not, I don't know, to have Most Def there, I feel like he wasn't utilized correctly. Does that make sense? He wasn't being used to his, to his full potential for what he can do. Um, I like what he did in a movie like Be Kind Rewind with Jack Black, where I feel like he's able oh, yeah. to be himself a little bit more as opposed to like trying to play this kind of otherworldly character, which an actor like an Eddie Izzard would have knocked out of the park mm -hmm. if he were oh, man. Um, if he were Ford. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Man. So he was supposed to be who? 
No, that's a good call. That would be yeah. so good. Just like to just to just make it a full on Monty quirk. Python, just a yeah. bunch of British quirky actors, exactly. Instead I, of trying to make it more, but it was a joint production between the UK and mm -hmm. the United States, so. That's I hate when people bring up uh, yes, yes. someone who would have been great in a movie that I thought was like, lacking, oh, such sure. as some. I don't know if we have any musical fans in the house, but someone suggested Mandy Patinkin for the role that Russell Crowe plays in the Les Mis adaptation, would have been and perfect. it ruined the whole. I mean, it, oh, I mean, so it was sorry. already. But <laughs> I was like, if only that could have been. Uh, Java yeah. Book Geek Girl says, "I feel like we need an Alpha Book Club." Movie yes. nights for after we finish books that have the movie adaptations, which would be so. I'm fun. down for that, guys. Or live I'm, tweeted or I something. I own Jurassic Park, you guys. Let's read the book and watch the movie. Because of like Let's figure it out. We could stream but it or could, something. I don't know. We could, we could we could do, do one of the things where we go and we're gonna hit play now. now. Watch yeah. along with us at home. <laughs> now, you right now. have the movie in the bigger box and we're in a little box. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. everything's yeah. gonna be great. That's an um, awesome I did idea. listen to the the score for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of the film while reading the book. Pulled it up on YouTube and it helped. It's cool. I think it matches. It's oh. pretty good. Um, okay, what else do we have to talk really about? Really quickly, uh, in the chat, it's already gone. I, I didn't want to interrupt because that was such a good conversation. But I think it was Evil Boy. Evil Boy has written his favorite quote from the movie, which is another example. Evil Otto. Evil Otto. You see it? Yes, I do. Right there. Um, uh -huh. And I think that this is actually a really good time if you do have a favorite quote to put it in there because we are talking about Douglas Adams' mm -hmm. language and how great he is with words constructed in a way that's not confusing and tells the point so well. <laughs> and his was, the ships hung in the sky in much the same way that bricks don't. <laughs> that's so funny. And it's just, and it, 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 for me, I felt it's that. fun to read. <laughs> you felt, felt it. I felt the, the weight of that. Can I read my favorite section? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm going to attempt a British accent. And mm. I forget who was who was the brilliant narrator in the film. I, no. Was, um, I, oh, Stephen Fry. It was Stephen Fry, oh, correct. Yeah. The, the amazing Stephen Fry, who did the Harry Potter uh, audiobooks, yes, correct? Yes, exactly. I got Jim Dale instead because oh. I said, oh, you had an audible. And oh, I'm so I sorry picked, about that. Yep, J.K. Rowling messed with Stephen Fry because bone. Stephen Fry was addicted to J.K. and then so she messed with him. Did you hear about that story? No, I thought it was Jim Dale that couldn't say pocketed it. No, I don't know who. As an but Australian, I can say pocketed it fine. But so, <laughs> and I've had a clearly, whole glass of wine. clearly, yeah. Let's get some more wine. Uh, here's here's <laughs> my favorite section. Uh, said Arthur Dent. He opened his eyes. It's dark. He said. Yes. Said Ford Prefect. It's dark. No light. Said Arthur Dent. Dark. No light. One of the things Ford Prefect had always found hardest to understand about humans was their habit of continually stating and repeating the very, very obvious, as in, it's a nice day, or you're very tall, or, oh dear, you seem to have fallen down a 30-foot well, are you all right? <laughs> At first, Ford had formed a theory to account for this strange behavior. If human beings don't keep exercising their lips, he thought, their mouths probably seize up. After a few months' consideration and observation, he abandoned this theory in favor of a new one. If they don't keep on exercising their lips, he thought, their brains start working. After a while, he abandoned this one as well as being obstructively cynical and decided he quite liked human beings after all. But he always remained desperately worried about the terrible number of things they didn't know about. Mm. I love that part. So do Terrible I. British mm -hmm. accent, Two forgive things, me, no, but great. One British accent actually wasn't that bad. We say Appreciate after. it. That's Could be better. No, after. No, pretty good. After. Number two. I struggle uh, with, you know what I struggle with? Water. How the hell do you water. say that? Water. 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 That's what it is. Water. water. All right, I'm set. Uh, the, British the, accent unlocked. Thank you, Mark. The number two reason why Rachel and I absolutely adore that passage is that as women, <laughs> we stand at almost no. six feet tall. You don't say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get out of town. Yeah. It's as if we didn't know that we were tall. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and Rachel and I, we've like, decided to adopt that any time someone likes to tell, are you not wearing, you're really tall. We are, <gasps> are we now? Yeah. Is this happening? I am. No, I don't believe you. No. I was only how, how many times do people um, ask you at the grocery store to get like stuff off the top shelf? No, because I'm not approachable. Uh, don't that's ask true. Mod isn't approachable. You're very absolutely friendly. Right. Yeah. yeah, you're very. Like, could you have a nice day? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> Rachel, you have a face that says, "Yeah, I'll get that for you." <laughs> yeah. so, so sorry. I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you do. I do do that. Yeah. Mod I've has a face. Like, it's like. Bugger off. Don't bother yeah. me. Don't talk to I me. I would pay to see you try and then hurt yourself. <laughs> so that's what's happening. Exactly. Today. It happens to me all that's the time. Bummer. I'm so sorry, guys. No, I I'm, like listen, to help. I'm five foot six. I'm uh, on the shorter end, or in my opinion, especially compared to every other Mexican in the world, I'm average height. I'm average height. I'm Actually, good. Actually, average height for men is 5'10. Mm -hmm. 5'10. So, oh, so that's not, really? I'm not I average height? Really? I'm definitely shorter than Are you really? Well, again, compared to Mexicans, me, I'm, I'm not comparing was... myself to Norwegians or whatever. I'm just saying, Mexican dudes, I'm <laughs> fine. I'm okay. My boyfriend Five, eight. Okay, that's fine. But I don't often get, hey, you're short. Not off every once in a while I do, but I'm sure you're a man. I don't exactly. Yeah. It's more acceptable for me to be to whatever height, unless I'm like four eight or Sorry something. To make but that it hasn't uh, that hasn't. 
but it's, that's what it is. It but is. everything <laughs> is. No, not sometimes. All the time it is. <laughs> um, so, guys, let's talk about some that. conclusions, predictions. What do we think is going to happen next? I've seen the film. I you don't know how. You can't predict. This is the kind yeah. of book that you cannot predict. You can't. This man was a penguin, and his friend did not have limbs for a portion of the book. Mm -hmm. Do not predict. I think there'll be more aliens, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't know that Earth is going to be back. I'm. I'm. I read the back of the book. I'm looking forward to a. I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to meeting a character named Viet Vojagig, a former graduate student obsessed with the disappearance of all the ballpoint pens he's bought over the years. Mm -hmm. He's not in the film. That character was not in the film, ah. unless I'm an idiot and and. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but I, but when rewatching the movie when the Earth was destroyed, I remember being like, I don't remember what happens in this movie. Does the Earth just get destroyed? And I thought it was shocking in like a good way. Like, wow, how dark? How how what a what a great thing to do early on and yeah. the same things happening in the books I can imagine when people first read it when it first came out that they were just like this is what the hell's going on this is fantastic the earth was destroyed and then maybe the earth gets brought back by the end of the first book I don't know I feel like that's what's going to happen because that's what happened in the film but no idea it really is the perfect prose to have an existential crisis isn't it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. look at the last passage on the back of the book where are these pens why are we born <laughs> why do we die for all the answers stick your thumb to the star I definitely thought about my death when reading this no, but they mention it in the book, and I can't mm -hmm. remember what it particularly was, but it was this whole immediate yeah, he's, existential crisis. He's going, he's thinking about the gravity of the earth being gone. Yeah, and it which doesn't, he can't even fathom. It doesn't hit him until, he thinks about his family, he thinks about the people he knows, nothing, he thinks about nothing, England and America, and nothing. then he thinks about no, the grocery store near him and the person he saw in line, and McDonald's and little things, McDonald's. and it is, it is scary and also helpful to, like, sometimes I just look at, like, space photos because okay. I, I like the earth i have a yeah. book of space photos yeah I'll really bring oh. it in next it's, time i'll bring it in it's amazing i love oh, looking at how Hubble. tiny the yep. earth Hubble. looks yes and how long we've been around a pale, and pale everything blue dot. and everyone who has ever lived ever died so mm -hmm. ever fought wars we are so insignificant. Has lived. it yeah. helps a little yeah. bit i think because it makes it makes everything that you're and this is how we get on alpha book club we start talking about life the Every universe time. and everything oh Welcome. my god um, but really, it makes you think about that, A, your your life matters to you because it is so big and something that's so small, and you have to make that everything. But it also makes the mistakes and the other things seem less. What's that? <laughs> Anything below like five and eight is manlet. Hot manlet. <laughs> manlet? <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for being a real dick. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, listen, at one point I was single. Thank you for giving me Ma gold. No, I can mod. Use mod. Mod. Manlet. No, in please your don't. Don't do, it. don't do manlet. <laughs> Listen, as a guy who was single at one point and was on OkCupid, I ha I don't ever need to see this <coughs> phrase again from a person. Sorry, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna date you unless you're over six foot. Sorry, sorry, but yep. I am open-minded and I want everything else to be open-minded and I'm just like, you're an awful person. Whatever, sorry. Yep. I had to, okay, great. I understand, I, I feel Ugh, like. just, uh, just I don't feel be awful. Yeah. No. Vocally, just keep it inside. <laughs> but I mean, you can also. That's like, uh, it's like, it's, sorry on thank you. it's like when I would see, like, I don't want to date outside my race. I'm like, you're racist. Just keep that inside. You don't have to put that on your dating profile, people. You don't have to do it. But my rhetoric would be like, you could call me a woo man. No, that's man. no, I'm not doing that. I would, I would you love are, you to be are a statuesque. Man. You are statuesque. Okay, Rachel, did you want to finish that thought about no. about our <laughs> existential crisis? Well, so sorry. Okay, no. gang, here's the deal. Here's your homework, everybody. First of all, thanks to YouTube for hanging out. Thank you to the Alpha Chat. You guys are amazing. YouTube, you're amazing. Uh, your homework is to finish up to chapter 18, which means you stop right at the beginning of 19. So read all the way through 18, including 18. Stop at 19. Send us your recommendations at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, at Join Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club for any book that you want to read next month. Mm. This is February, but we need a March, an April, and a May. We need Whoa. a bunch of different stuff. Whoa. Stick around for, uh, well, that's pretty much it. Big yeah. thanks to Rachel and Maude. Come on, guys. Yay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Rachel you guys for joining us. Yes. And Rachel for Skyping. And yeah. thank you so much, Rachel. That was Rachel. fantastic. It could uh, be you next week, too. Stick yeah. around for this thing that's coming up. I just need the thing to. Uh, nope. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, guys, we'll see you next week. Uh, <laughs> YouTube, you're awesome. The nerd guy said, What the hell's going on? You're welcome. This was Alpha Book Club. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.